Ready to go. The sun is shining. In fact, partly sunny on this Thursday afternoon. Day 7 of 40 as our autumn season here in bucolic Miami Gardens continues at Gulfstream Park West. On the turf for the second consecutive day, obviously we are indeed fast and firm as Alfredo Alfonso and Jason Blewett join you live on this edition, Thursday edition of GPW Today. Eight races on the card, Mr. Alfredo, and I'll tell you, I like, we were just talking about that sixth race with Timmy M. That is a very good turf race a bit later on. Yes, and despite all this uh, rain trending, we have the races today on the on the turf. So let's see if we hit the, the tickets today. Absolutely. A, yeah, no, you've got a couple of pick fives coming, and I'll have the Rainbow Six. And speaking of the Rainbow, that is our lonesome carryover on this Thursday. It is 10-10 after all, October 10th, with an eight-pack in store. But about 50,000 up for grabs, and that opening leg in the Rainbow goes in race number three. And Alfredo, I know you're chomping at the bit. You've got a single fourth coming in the second race today, a horse that I happen to think will be very tough to beat as the favorite. And I'm just wondering in this early pick five, who else do you have in store outside of Catnip Kitten? Yeah, well, Catnip Kitten, I, I think she's uh, dropping in, in, in class. Uh, and th that she seems too much for this group. I think she's going to, to track the, the pace and she's going to get the victory. The ticket is not expensive, only $27. So I am using uh, the number two and the number five in the fifth race. That is part of the Rainbow Pick Six also. Yeah, the Rainbow starts, obviously, in the uh, third in that fifth race uh, cash out. Uh, you're too deep. You're using the Zerpa claim, Elisa's secret. It's funny. The two and five, who I like as well, I think Princess Latina, the five, is going to be a massive favorite and pretty tough to beat. But it is kind of funny because Elisa's secret, the two, is off the claim for Gilberto Zerpa, previously trained by Safi Joseph. Safi's got the five Princess Latina. The previous trainer there was Gilberto Zerpa, so it is kind of funny, almost a trading uh, spaces or trading places type situation there with those two fillies. Well, these two trainers are very good in the claiming races, so we are going to have a good confrontation that race. Definitely, and that's a good segue, I think, uh, Alfredo, and just a good scene setter, in fact, the uh, the first race as uh, we start on the main track and an eight-race program split down the middle with four on the dirt and the other four on the turf. This is a pretty eclectic cast of two-year-old fillies. I like the diversity here and the fact that you've got horses that haven't faced each other for the most part on a regular basis. Now, my opinion in this race, the five marching in, I don't like her as the favorite. If she's indeed the two to one favorite when all is said and done, that was my one opinion looking at this race. I don't like her. In fact, you and I were just talking, marching in, who's now nine to two, will be knocking heads with the two Princess Uleli. They faced each other back on September 8th. And I, although I didn't take your horse, Alfredo, I think Princess Uleli ran the better race. She ran really well last time out. Yes, because she has a, this low start at the beginning that affects her a lot. And I am surprised that it's not, not just first pick because he's uh, from a uh, Fox stable and he's doing very well in the last weeks. And with a good start and these five uh, pounds allowance uh, by Christian Torres, I think she's one to in this race. No, I think she'll run very well. And uh, Fredo and I both obviously prefer her from that September 8th rematch. But I do like the more or less new faces on the outside for this level. And that includes the six charge account, who I think will run very well. I'm not expecting a price on her here. Hopefully a little more than her current three to two in the early betting. Thought she ran really well first out. You get the good connections of Joe Orsino and Paco. And I think the seven Marin's Marvel. She might be a little little tough to gauge but I mean looking back Alfredo did she really at big odds have much of a chance in the Desert Vixen or the Susan's girl as she drops down today I think she's got legit excuses no she ran very well in her debut yep and after that she tried that competition that was too much for her and in this group she's going to improve a lot yeah for okay. sure yeah, good little good little first race, though, for the two-year-old Phillies on this Thursday afternoon. We can move on to the second. We hit the turf course, and obviously this upcoming $12,500 three-and-up Philly mare made in Claimer houses Alfredo's early pick five single. And if I was putting in a ticket, I'm singling the eight with you, Catnip Kitten. There's just not a lot for her to beat as she's back down in class. Yeah, she's back down, and in the last races, she's uh, very close to, to the winners. Uh, Paco Lopez aboard. 
So I think she's going to, to track the pace from the very beginning, and she's going to close strong in this race. Yeah, she hasn't had as many chances at the, as the six boastful Contessa, who's 0 for 11, or the number two Rosa Starr, who's a, a, a player here, at least on the, uh, the outer fringes of things, but she's 0 for 21 in her career. Alfredo and I both like the favorite. Hopefully it's a Paco Lopez early double sweep, and we'll take a little time out with the first two in the books. We'll be back. A little Stronic 5 talk and a Rainbow Six coming up next. The best chance for success begins with a solid foundation. At Hardacre Farm, early personal one-on-one -on -one care starts the journey to becoming a champion. Bred to leading stallions, our mares represent the highest standards. Hardacre Farm's signature in the breeding industry. Based in Ocala, Florida, breeder and owner Amy Tarrant has inspired excellence throughout her entire career. In your quest for success, start with Hardacre Farm. Breeding the champions of tomorrow. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with Express Bet. Sign up for an Express Bet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign up bonus. And we are back on this live Thursday edition from our clubhouse studios here at Gulfstream Park West. A little Thursday GPW today. And Alfredo, we do have, of course, another Friday, an eight race Friday card here locally at Gulfstream Park West. But in looking at the entire picture, we've got another round of the Stronic Five, a $100,000 guarantee and a good looking sequence that begins with race seven tomorrow afternoon up at Laurel Park. Uh, only 12% of the count. We have two races uh, from Santanita Park, race three and race, uh, race four has the legs C and E respectively. And we have also two from Laurel. Yeah, two from Laurel Park, little bi-coastal action, as we like to say, in the Stronic Five. Now, coming home here and looking and focusing in on a jackpot Rainbow Six that has just under 50,000 in the carryover kitty, I am three deep starting things out, although I really prefer a couple of horses coming out of the same race in the opening leg. And uh, we'll talk about the five, I am Beowulf, and the six, Nathan Secret, in just a second. I've already alluded to Princess Latina, who I think is going to be very tough to beat at a, uh, at a paltry price uh, as potentially the lone speed after scratches in the uh, in the fifth race as she's down off a nice win for Safi and some good coverage the remainder of the way. I am three deep though. I know you like Timmy M and I used him and I think he's going to run great this afternoon. Do you give a chance to the number eight horse Max KO Alfredo in race six? I Personally, I've been waiting for him to finally get back on the turf. Well, he has a lot of speed, but that race particularly will have a fast pace, so I don't, I don't know how he's going to manage that, but it's a, it's a good launch at that race. Yeah, no, I think he'll run uh, very well. Now, as far as this uh, third race is concerned, um, we've got a group of two-year-old uh, Florida bred, $50,000 maiden claimers here at five and a half furlongs. We'll go with nine, and although we have that rematch from September 14th concerning my top pick, basically our exact box there, I wanted to go back off the bat and just show everybody again how well the five I am Beowulf ran first time out. He's the number 12 going back to the nightcap here on August 25th, and as you might imagine, having stalled 12 of 12, going five furlongs on the dirt. He was not able to really get over, save any ground whatsoever. And I think he ran a sneaky good race in his debut for Stephen Lilly Coceres in the green cap, widest of all. You'll see him not threaten the top two, and the two speeds just bottomed out the field and nobody could catch them. But this is a horse that actually ran better, I think, watching the replay than the race might appear in the past performance or on the past performance line. Second time out with him, I walked away a little disappointed. Figured he'd get bet, he was two to one, and he didn't finish up. But much like your top pick, because Alfredo, they're coming out of the same race here on September 14th, I feel as though the number five, I am Beowulf, just got a little tired at seven, and he's down in class today. Not that this is an easy spot, but above all, I like the cutback for him, the five and a half furlongs. And the same applies for Nathan's yep. secret, the number six. He shows a lot of speed in, in, in his debut, and he's working extremely well, a uh, four furlong in 46 and four. So I think he's going to take the lead, and I am Beowulf is going to 
track him very close, and they add uh, blinkers to the number five, so I think the race is going to be very disputed from the very beginning. You know, good match up there. You've got Grand Cacique in the second spot for trainer Victor Barboza Jr. in the third spot, excuse me, as Christian Torres picked up two wins yesterday, and he continues to impress with his apprenticeship. He's a very good rider. Yes, he's winning a lot of races. This uh, um, jockey from Puerto Rico, and this uh, five found allowance is a good advantage for him. All right, let's move on to uh, the fourth race, already time, and we're starting to get used to the flow and the rhythm of these eight race weekdays here at Gulfstream Park West. Already time, of course, for Alfredo's late pick five ticket. You're three deep to start things out, unlike the first leg or first uh, pick five, I should say, with Catnip Kitten. No singles for you in a $36 play. Well, I don't have singles, but I have uh, your Princess Latina, of course, but I had uh, um, Elisa's Secret in that race. That is a key race uh, for the Rainbow Pick Six and also for the Late Pick Five. So it's $36 only, and we, we are hoping to, to hit this ticket today. Yeah, I hope you get lucky, my friend. Now, two, three, six for you to start, and obviously, if you're looking at this race, I think what jumps off the page is the fact you've got that good rematch between two horses and a rematch we'll check out in just a second between Marcelino and Lucky to be in America. And the other horse is certainly the six who we'll discuss after the replay at our boy Bodie. But let's look at Marcelino. In this race, about 50 days ago, you've got Marcelino and Lucky to be in America. Now, Lucky to be in America, the inside speed in the red saddle towel. Marcelino had the sky blue blinkers and cap attacked him, and they, they really put on a good show here. What I find interesting, and they both ran terrific, and this was one of these turf sprints across town at Gulfstream that even watching the race again in preparation for today's card, you almost feel as though both horses deserve to get their picture taken. It was that good of an A-type effort between Marcelino and Lucky to be in America. What I find funny, uh, Alfredo, is the fact that they're going both horses as they rematch. They've got new new barns today because they were both claimed out of that race we just looked at. Yeah, they have the new barns, but they have good ones also. Yep. Um, uh, Marcelino has uh, now Safi Joseph Jr. and Lucky to win America, Marcial Navarro. They are good trainers in these uh, uh, turf sprints. So I'm expecting to have this duel again from the very beginning. And maybe, maybe the number six uh, will be an upsetter, our boy Body. Uh, in the last race, uh, he, he finished very close to the winning freshman street. Mm -hmm. And with uh, Christian Torres again, has a good opportunity. He's not obviously our boy Bodie coming out of the replay we looked at. So he's got potentially, depending upon how you feel about that field and, and effort between Marcelino and Lucky to be in America, that might be a positive. I also think that Frenchman Street, Florida bred allowance he's dropping out of with Apache Brave, that's a good field that he comes out of. Yeah. That was a good field of turf sprinters. And, and he, he finished very close to the winner. And we know how effective is Georgina Baxter in these turf races. Yeah, she's very good. Turf, dirt, sprint. She's very tough in those sprints, no matter the surface. Let's move on. We'll flip the page. We'll come up on race number five. And again, uh, Alfredo and I mentioned more or less the big two in this race, in this uh, $16,000 Philly Amer claiming race on the dirt and more or less a trading spaces or places type situation with the barns essentially flip-flopping between Elisa's Secret and certainly the five Princess Latina, who's going to be a big favorite in this race. And here she is. There's not a ton to look at other than her just basically at this point as they approach the top of the stretch she's just cruising in hand I mean she was really a winner every step of the way last time out at odds of seven or five she's just waiting for Edgar Zayas to ask her to run Edgar sets her down and she does the rest I mean just blowing this uh, this field blowing the doors off this field and here's the thing Alfredo Safi claimed this horse back in June off Zerper for just $6,250. Got through that condition last time out. She's no longer eligible to run. You put her in for 16. I mean, to me, this is just a win-win-win right down, right down the line. Yes, and she has the speed to do it again with Edgar Sayas. Uh, Sayas won uh, on this Philly two times in the last three uh, uh, last outs. So I think she is my first pick also. She mm -hmm. thinks she uh, has a good chance to uh, take the victory. But Elisa Secret is a danger. Gilberto Serpa is a specialist with these uh, uh, sprinters. And with Paco Lopez aboard, She's a danger for me, and that is the reason that I, I, I added her in my ticket. And the key word, I think, is sprinter. 
I think she found quite simply last out. And she's a little fresher than Princess Latina for what it's worth. She hasn't run since the first week or second week of August, back on the 8th of August. Mile, not her game, dude. No. She's back to a better distance, don't you think? Yes, that is her distance. She has uh, two victories, her two victories in this distance. So that is the distance for her. She's going to, to provide a good competition to Princess Latina. All right. There's no stakes this afternoon here at Gulfstream Park West, but this is a very worthy, featured, six-race type turf crew uh, we're ready to go with here on the grass, naturally, at seven and a half furlongs. Just a very good open company, entry-level allowance race that has a lot going on. And I've talked with Ronnie a few times on this show, and I've been a firm believer and supporter, I guess, an advocate of the three-year-old turf division that we had basically throughout the winter and more importantly and uh, in relevance to this race through the spring and summer meets. I feel as though the fields for the English Channel, the Thirsty Fish, even though that race got rained off the turf, and last time out in the Bears' Den, that was a good and is a very good division of local three-year-old turf horses. And I mention that because your top pick and my second horse, the number one, Timmy M, is dropping out of not only a good field as far as the quality went, but but you can see just, I mean, this horse was real. It's turned into like a wrestling match at the top of the stretch where he got this great ride in the Generazio colors, but he Christian Torres and Christian will try to make some room for him, but you'll watch the number one in the red silks and the white cap Sterling drive wouldn't really budge and didn't want to let him out. And this turned into a little bit of a, like I said, a little bit of a wrestling match at the top of the stretch with Timmy M who did run a very nice race in defeat. Yeah, he was dumped at the, at the, top of the final stretch and then he tried to squeeze uh, through the rail to get the victory but this uh, horse scraps was flying uh, in the middle of the track and was, got an easy victory but Timmy M finished second in a beautiful race. In my yeah opinion. it was a very good race for Joe Orsino. You see this horse potentially also not only is he uh, arguably the most talented going in with the good company lines you think he's going to get a good pace to run out here? Yes I'm, I think for sure we have a uh, uh, el de, this horse uh, that you pick, I think, uh, uh, Great Kahuna, I think he's running from the very beginning, mm -hmm. not in the last time. He, he ran from behind, but today I think he's going, he's going to run in the lead. We have a cable channel, uh, that also has speed, a speed horse, and Sovereign Warrior, mm -hmm. the horse with more speed maybe in the field, and he's going to take the lead and Timmy M is going to reach at the end. No, it's a very good <laughs> point as far as the pace, and we'll see if Timmy M can get the money naturally, but I've been waiting. I'm going to stick to my guns here and hold firm. I've been waiting for Max KO to finally get a, to be able to race on the turf. I mean, he's a horse as far as the weather, and it was more or less a rainy July and August here in South Florida. He was about as unlucky and snake bitten as any local horse that I can think of with being rained off. The good news, at least for me, even if the pace is on the fast side, I think the fact he's run so well of late on the dirt, even though he's a far better turf horse, I think that underscores just how well he's doing, I'm hoping, for Rob Falcone. Well, he's very fit. My fear is when he is not able to take the lead mm -hmm. and Sovereign Warrior is, this, is in this race, sure. he will be in trouble from the very beginning. That is the reason that I don't pick him. No, that fair is the enough. real reason. Okay. I'm 815. Little bit of a disagreement there. Obviously, Alfredo is very bullish on Timmy M. There's a lot to like there with Paco. In fact, I am I am on the Joe Orsino and Paco bandwagon today. I like them in the first. They're seven to five with uh, my top pick in the early betting. And I certainly like them turning the page and coming up on our main track finale. Thursday's last on the dirt goes in the seventh, around two turns. It's a three and up Philly Amer, 6250 claimer I looked around Alfredo the locals nobody really nobody scared me and I know the recent form of the number one uh, baby monster is a little iffy at best and that's probably putting it kind and maybe a little too diplomatic uh, but I like this barn change a lot first time the Joe Orsino with Paco taking the call in a race like this that tells me Joe feels as though I think he's got this filly turned around and ready to run her best race in quite a while off the trainer change. Well, she's very fit. She maybe will uh, win this race. This race is a low quality, uh, low quality one. Uh, we have, for example, Magali that she was running against best competition at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And now she's facing this a weak field. Right. Anyway, uh, she's not the favorite of the race. Maddie Salsa in the last race out, she ran fantastically. And from wire to wire and in a good time of 
137. Uh, that is the reason I pick her in the first, uh, has my first pick. And the number three, of course, Denver, that was disappointed in the in the last uh, timeout. Yeah. But she has a good uh, closing, uh, closing kick. No, she does, and her resume, she may have the best resume on the year as far as 2019 is concerned. Claimed off Victor Barboza by Barry Rose, so you do have a bit of a barn change this afternoon, and that's not a knock on Barry, but Vic Victor's very tough guy to claim off of, especially when you're dealing with a horse who did not run well for Victor at even money last time out. And I'm curious with Maddie Salsa, your top pick. She's the story of the race because if she runs anything close to her last, I mean, they won't know which way she ran in here. I mean, she, she'll win this race from GPW to Gulfstream Park. My issue with her is, where did that race come from last time out at 35 to 1? I mean, the time, everything was so much better than all of her other races. Yes, that's, that's right. But we have the same conditions, same level. Saint trainer, Saint jockey. Mm -hmm. That is, she's she's a, a danger again. All right, a different track though. Shipping oh, over to GPW. Right. Different track, but that's everything right. else is the same. We'll see if lightning can strike a couple of times there for Maddie Salsa. I'm inside. Alfredo's outside in race number seven, and we of course can uh, uh, call last call here coming up on Thursday's nightcap. We're on the turf with a twelve thousand five hundred dollar maiden claiming race. I'm going to take the one Royal Duke who hasn't raced in about four and a half months. I've noticed a bunch of these Michael Yates trained horses. Now that Miguel Vasquez seems to be the first call, first drink rider, it seems like Michael is getting some good production with Miguel, and they got the one Royal Duke. But make no mistake, I respect your top pick as well, the number nine, Asede, who's got the speed in good recent form. Yes, and he's uh, coming from the outside, and the number one that you're mentioning, Royal Duke, my doubt is how is how how he's going to manage the speed from the inside. He needs a good jump, yep. and he needs to take the lead maybe to don't be, you know, uh, and tramp in, in, in the first stages of the race. Well, you saw what happened with Timmy M. Yeah. You know, you save ground, but if things don't open up, you of know, course. you may get slammed back in, you know? Exactly, and the, in this race, with only five furlongs, you need to be close to the lead from the very beginning. All right, you've got that with a Saturday. I'm going to try to pick everybody off with the one Royal Duke and my good buddy Miguel Vasquez. And, of course, great job by you, Alfred. We'll have Claudia back on tomorrow. You'll get the call on Saturday, though, so you better start studying. Yes, but today is the day to hit the ticket, so I wish you very good luck. All right, same here, everybody, and best of luck to all of you out there. Thanks for tuning in to Gulfstream Park West today. We'll take a little breather here on the show. We'll send it on up in a few moments. The big man, Pete Aiello, standing by with those scratches and changes.